Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of TechView Snelp. And today I am doing a quick video on how to get your Android Studio and all the workstation up and running before you start coding. Now, this is the start of the new Android series that I'm putting out. This will come out once to twice a week. In the level of hardness as far as beginner, intermittent, or advanced will be in the title. So if you want to learn how to code, stick with us and check out our videos. Jinx is an affiliate of this video. If you want to save 50% off on some t-shirts, then please feel free to check out the annotation or the link down below. Let's jump on in so you can learn how to code. So the first thing that you need to do is go down to the description and the links to the two websites you need to go to will be down below. And basically what we want to do is go to this website first, the Oracle website. And what you want to do is go down to where you see Java SE Development Kit and then try to find the highest number on here. Usually it's the first, but if you scroll down you can see other numbers. So from here, what you want to do, and even if you don't download the highest number, it's it's fine. The stuff will just be fine. So what you need to do is go down to the, the developer kit that you want to download, and then go down to accept, and then find your operating system. Now, as far as the numbers, what do they mean? X86, X64, X86 is for the 32 bit computers 64 64 but uh, basically um, you're probably on a 64 so go with that even though x86 is a higher number these are lower in it has to deal with ram and stuff and really all modern operating systems are 64 so that's a big thing to keep in mind I got a video on this in fact go ahead and search it on my channel and it gets in detail between the two versions so find your version and then go ahead and download and it's very important that you go ahead and install this before you even click the open button to install the Android studio now once you have that downloading go to the next link which will be the Android studio and then go ahead and click this green button and it should say your operating system type so if you're running Mac then it should say something around to that whereas I'm running Windows it will say this so go ahead and click that and and download that this will take a long time to download above the two so also keep that one in mind but before you open it up to install it it will verify a few things and what would end up happening is it will look for this. So again, make sure you install it before you even open up the thing to install it. Now, once you do open up Android Studio, oh, and uh, as far as installation process, this is pretty straightforward. Just uh, click next a few times and read a few things, make sure everything is right. But given that you did what I said, what you need to do is open up the Android Studio setup and then finally click the next once it gets to there. And what would happen is if you did not do what I said, once you click next, the thing would have been looking forward to Java development stuff. And that means you would have to go through a wild goose chase just trying to find a thing which you could prevent it in the first place. So from here, what you need to do is go ahead and click next and then click I agree after you read all this. I don't really read it. Not many people do. And again, I agree. Then make sure that this is in proper locations. It probably is. Then click next. And then finally, go ahead and you can change this, but it's recommended that you keep it as it is and you click next and then finally next you can show details to see it but as you can see it will start installing so i'll be right back 
until it's done. And while we're waiting on this, I'm just going to tell you that one extra thing you should do, especially if you're going to really go through this tutorial stuff, is go to the following and just basically make an account. I have a video on how to set up everything properly, so check that one out. I'll have a link to the video below and also a card on the top right so check that out it's very very important and if you want to get into this into coding at all as a profession i don't care if it's with android i don't care if it's with windows i don't care if it's coding for max if you want to work for a company you will have to have some github experience and some, basically have some projects on it so the employers can see it very very important but uh, check that out and all my public projects will be posted there now that this is done just simply click next and you can start the android studio so you may run into this to install your version of android now yours may look a little bit different from mine I had one previously loaded up with a dark theme. I'll show you how to get that. It's very, very simple. But the biggest thing to keep in mind, you will end up having to run through something like this. And also you will have to update your SDK stuff and we'll go through that. So once you click the finish and you're done, and if you see a retry, click, go ahead and click that. But once you see finish and you click that, You'll be presented with a page like this go ahead and click configure go to sdk manager and then wait for that to get done now as far as the sdk manager the uh, there's two versions it's really the settings and then you got the standalone but with this what to keep in mind is if you see update available this is fine you should update it but you might be asking what about these other versions so what is android 2.2 2.3 and so on basically these are versions of android the operating system as we covered in the last video android is basically an operating system so with android 2.2 the big difference between the the versions of android is simply that one version will have more the next version will have more features than the previous version things will be changed security to uh, actual functionality like say for example with one of these I, I don't remember off the top of my head but one of these will add nfc capability and then after that the nfc capability stays there same thing with a few other things so it's very very important to realize the different versions of android when you're coding so we're going to go to sdk tool and what we're looking for is this intel x emulator now you want to hit apply and we want to go ahead and press ok now once this is done, simply select finish and then go down to your folder, your, your Windows Explorer, if you're on Windows. If you're on a different operating system, then you will need to check for that, for whatever operating system you have. But basically we want to, for Windows, go to the following, the C drive or whatever your primary drive is, user, your username for your your current logged in go put to app data this is a hidden folder so down below in the description you can just copy and paste it make sure you put in your username where it says right there then local android and so on what we want to do is go to the following this the um, intel double click that and then run it click next next 
install. If you see this at all, then basically it means you need to go into the BIOS into your system. And I can point you in directions to do that. But let's say that you don't have that stuff, uh, like the BIOS is not a problem. It might be a antivirus system. So for example, AVAS. If we go to AVAS and go to the settings and then troubleshooting, if we go down to enable hardware assist virtualization, if we unclick that and then press OK, then restart the computer, it should allow it. Again, make sure your BIOS allows it and make sure that nothing else is keeping it from doing it. You would now need to take a look at what needs to be updated and what you should add. You can go ahead and select all new, select updates, deselect all, and so on. I personally would say for me, especially if you're going to be coding on a given computer quite a bit and you are not as worried about data caps or, or Again, if you're going to be coding on a computer quite a bit, go ahead and install it all. Keep in mind, this will take quite a bit of memory, but and this will take some time to download because this is a bit of information. But a huge thing to keep in mind is that this will add a lot of functionality into your stuff. So let's go ahead and click install. And from here, what I'll say is go to each one of these carrots and click it so it closes everything. Go to the set license on each thing. And then from here, what we want to do is go ahead and click install. Again, this is going to take a long, long time to get done. But once you're done, you will get a lot of stuff. However, of course, if you're not downloading that much or you're just doing a simple update, it might not take long at all. So before we close out this video and we go into another video, which is will be how to start your first application. Let's get into some things you need to take a look at while the SDK stuff is downloading. What you need to do is go through the settings, which is this area, and just take a look at all the stuff. What I will advise you to do is, again, go through the appearance and take a look at this and, and some of the other stuff. But um, you want to also go down to like Java, yeah, because we're going to be coding in Java a bit. Make sure all the colors are what you want. What I personally like to do and just just a personal thing is have it where the comments are bright bright green neon green and um, all you have to do is just click on that so say for example if if the thing is looking like this and you're having a hard time finding a particular something just click and find find whatever you need down here and then click on it and it should show up so from here what you want to do is click the use inherent Go ahead and um, you might get a warning like that. So let's make a new save as. So let's say save as A and take out the use inherit. And we want to select the color, the foreground color, and then we can brighten that up. So it's like a neon green. And I might actually just say something like that. Should be good. And now we see that it's a neon green. It's something that will stand out. And then do the same thing with XML. Here is a um, where the comment is. So again, it stands out from everything else. And when we come across it, we can see it. As you see there. 
Now, another thing I'll advise is go in font, change the font to whatever size you need. The bigger your computer is, this, this is kind of actually a reverse of how things should be. But the bigger your computer is, the bigger the font should be. Um, what I found is like on laptops and stuff, the default font's fine. It's probably because your the laptop's not that far from your face. But where I got a pretty good size monitor, a 21 inch, it's uh, it, it makes it very difficult to read things, and then even worse on videos and stuff. So w what I would do is I'll just play with the font size until I find something comfortable and go from there. And the thing to notice if you're wondering how things are going to look when you're coding, here's an example. So you can just take a look at that and see, is this too big? Is it not big enough? And you can obviously change it as you go through, but this is about what it will look like. And for me, this is fine. In fact, if you feel like the code that I show is too small, let me know in the in future videos or this video, and I'll try to fix it if, um, if enough people talk about it. But this is a quick example that you can look at. When you're done, press apply, and it applies all that. But anyways, hopefully this has helped you out enough to get started. And in the next video, we're going to get into how to start your first application. And if you got any questions or anything, then please leave that down below in the comment section. And feel free to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video. And have a great day.